Hello and welcome. Hey, we're starting a new unit, um, unit two. It's all about differentiation, uh, differentiation and the basic derivative rules. There are like 10 units to this. We'll spend some time in the units two, three. That's going to take us a little bit. Um, the rest of them will go fairly quickly, I think. All right, so here we are on the first day. We're looking at unit two, one. Average versus instantaneous rate of change. You can see your homework is going to be a worksheet. It follows in the notes packet. Average rate of change. Do you, what do you know about average rate of change? The average rate of change of a function, f of x, so let's use f of x, over the x interval from a to b is given by a rock. Average rate of change. And a rock could be written out as the y value f of b minus the other y value f of a divided by b minus a. And what I did there really was took like a y sub 2 minus a y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Do you recall seeing that? Only I put it in function notation. So I took a and inputted it into f, which gave me a y value. And I also took b and put it into f, and those gave me my two y values. Sometimes your middle school teacher might have referred to this as delta y over delta x, change of y over change of x. And we also just called this slope, and we identified it as m. All right, so there's a big history lesson for us. Now, um, the average rate of change tells us the slope of the line through these two points. It's actually um, the slope of a secant line. If you recall a secant line from middle school, or from geometry, which I guess was middle school for you. And these are our points. X value of, oh, wow, that was weird. X value, what happened there? X value of, um, come on back in for me. X value, so this would have been like my X sub 1, Y sub 1. This would have been my X sub 2, Y sub 2 point. And then you can see there's basic slope calculation. So A rock, associate that with just our normal slope that we've always done. All right, find the average rate of change over the following intervals. And I have three different functions. We've got the algebraic um, A, we've got B as a graph, and C as a table. So multiple ways of looking at it. These are different functions, of course, because we can see that B is quadratic, where A is a square root function. So they aren't meant to be the same function. We won't probably get the same answer on all these. But we're going to calculate out A rock. So on the interval from negative 1 to 3, then A rock will look like f of 3 minus f of negative 1 divided by 3 minus negative 1. Plugging 3 into our square root gets me a 6 plus 3, and the other square root would be um, negative 2 plus 3, because I would have put a negative 1 in for my x, all over 4. That gives me root 9 minus a 1 over a 4. So I get a 3 minus 1 over 4. Finally, a 2 fourths. Finally, an answer of 1 half. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Just took a little bit of work. On B, I'm going to have to locate my points, right? So let's locate, um, locate our points. So when I put in negative 1, oh, it looks like we get 0. And when we put in 3, it takes me way up there. That looks like 8 to me. And now we can go forward with our process. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. All right, so our A rock, average rate of change, will be, um, do we want to do f of 3 minus f of negative 1 over 3 minus negative 1? Ken, if you want. Plugging stuff in, I'd have 8 minus 0 over 3 minus negative 1. And that's going to get me. 8 over 4, I get an average rate of change of 2. Next, for C, if you have a highlighter, let's find our points. Um, we could say the same thing, locate points. I have 
three twenty four and one negative eight. Is that what you're seeing? So I would have um, three comma twenty four as well as negative one negative eight x y, and our a rock will be um, f of 3 minus f of negative 1, just like our other starters, 3 minus negative 1. And now grabbing the locations or the y values for, and the x values, what do we got? 8 minus 3 over a negative 1 minus 8. Oh, goodness, Cindy. Woo, that was a bad mistake. Okay, <laughs> this was my 324. So I'm going to go this, 24 minus negative 8 and then 3 minus negative 1. Oh, I like that better. 32 over 4 gets us an 8. Nice numbers today. We didn't get any fractions, did we? All right, A rock. I think you can do it. Okay, then let's talk about instantaneous rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change of a function occurs at a point. So I rock is known as instantaneous rate of change, I-R-O-C. And this one is a limit process. Of course, the limits had to come into play. That's why we studied them all in unit one. And we are going to take the difference of the Y's over the difference of the X's. So I have two points really I'm evaluating at C and I'm letting the limit get close to C so our X says X moves to C so if X gets close to C this difference will go to zero and that's going to bring it together at a point you'll understand this in a little bit we're going to go through a diagram of it so on top though it's still just Y minus Y1 x minus x1. So really just a nice slope calculation going on there, right? This really looks like a slope, but the problem is we don't have the set of numbers like we did in a rock. The instantaneous rate of change of a function at a comma b is defined as the slope uh, as the slope of the tangent line at the point a comma b. So um, we, we could pick up some, yeah, let's do it right there. That looks like a good point. Make this my a comma b, and then the slope at that will turn out looking like that. We're going to draw a tangent line. This will be a tangent line rather than a secant line. And we'll get into more of these discussions. All right, so um, we've got a practice problem coming our way. It says, how can we find the instantaneous rate of change of f of x when x is negative 2? So let's go plot or locate the point. I'm going to do locate the point. When x is negative 2, it puts me right there. If you would grab a ruler, I want you to draw the tangent line here. So maybe hit pause and go grab a ruler and then come back. Here is my tangent line. I'm trying to do my very best on it. How could we locate a, a, um, the slope of this, of this um, red line? when it's going through x equals negative 2. So it's skimming by, right? Tangent lines kind of do that skimming. They touch at just one point. Now, they can cut through um, a, f a function as well. They can cross over if necessary. But in this case, we're going to be just skimming the outside, it looks like. So what I'm going to do is locate two points on my um, tangent line. And then I'll calculate out the slope of that on my tangent line. So first, first we drew the tangent line. So first we drew the tangent line at 
x equals negative 2. And then second, we're going to locate a couple points. Look for some nice ones. In this particular case, I think we had a couple nice ones, or at least I'm going to kind of make it look like it. Um, I would have negative 1, 4, and down here I'd have negative 4, negative 3. So I have two points, um, negative 1, 4, and my other one is negative 4, negative 3. Did I write that backwards? I sure did. Negative 3, negative 4. Why did I start with the y value? Negative 3, negative 4. I guess that was just sitting in front of my eyes on this smart board. Um, the other one was fine, wasn't it? Okay, now, now let's uh, calculate out our slope. So the slope is going to be the difference of the y's. What order, whatever order you want to go. So I'm going to go 4 minus negative 4 over... That was 4 minus negative 4, same direction then of travel. Negative 1 minus negative 3. Looks like I get 8 over 2, slope of 4. Does that look about right? Up 1, 2, 3, 4. So up 4 over 1. Yeah, that would be a slope of 4, wouldn't it? So that's one way of doing it. Derivative notation. Let's introduce what a derivative is. This is new to us. What's up with this like apostrophe symbol? Well, we call it a prime symbol in, in math. So it's f prime of c is used to denote the slope of a tangent line to a function at some point. I'm going to call it at x equals c. Therefore, the derivative at c is equal to the limit as x moves towards c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. So this was that I rock idea, wasn't it? This is I rock. We will call f prime the derivative of f of x. Other common notations, we'll get into these later, but I just wanted you to see them. y prime, dy dx, the derivative of f of x, with respect to dx, you'll learn how to read all those. But for right now, just know that there's other ways of forming it. And then our one that we talked about, f prime of x. Okay, so it says use the limit process to find the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 3 given our function. Given our function this, we want to find it at x equals 3. If you want, highlight those up. All right, so... I want to find f prime of 3, and I'm going to do that through the limit process. I'm going to let x go towards 3, f of c, right? And there's, so all my c's, this is my c value, is 3. And then just following along, it's going to be f of x. Oh, f of x. Yeah, let's put that in there. f of x, before I start plugging numbers, minus f of 3, my c value, over x minus 3. Which then gets me a statement that looks like the limit as x approaches 3. Well, f of x is 4x minus 1. f of 3 would be insert 3 into our function, right? Evaluate f at 3 over x minus 3. Okay, let's just keep doing the limit math, which we should be good at coming out of unit 1. We'd have a 4x minus 1. 12 minus 1 is 11. So I would have minus 11 on top over x minus 3, which makes... It's a long process here. You might have to go horizontally because you might be running out of page space here. 4x, put these together, gets me a minus 12, x minus 3. Oh, GCF. Look at us just roll, pull a 4, x minus 3. Yippee, because we had issues with that denominator going towards 3, didn't we? It was taking it to 0. But now when we get this cancellation, aha, 
what did we just find? We found the value of the derivative at 3, which gives us 4. This is the instantaneous rate of change. Fantastic, huh? Now, could we have picked that up off of our function? Well, since it's a linear function, it's pretty boring, isn't it? We're down here at negative 1, and we have a climb of up 4 over 1. And it's just a little bit off, isn't it? Let's see if I can slide that back. There we go. Um, so <laughs> even when we're out at 3, 1, 2, 3, the slope at 3 is still going to be 4, isn't it? Because we know this indicates the slope. But the instantaneous slope is also 4. All right. Example 3. We've got a couple to go, don't we? Okay, example 3. Uh, given g of x is a quadratic, find g prime of 4. Write the equation of the line tangent to g at x equals 4. We'll get into that tangent. Well, there it is. I didn't mean to touch it that way, I guess. There's the tangent line. We'll get into that at the end. But first, we got to get, well, we know our point, or no, maybe we don't, and we also got to get our slope. Okay, well, let's find, um, let's do g prime of 4 first. So that's going to look like the limit as x approaches 4. This is our c value for that um, limit process of 4 f of x minus f of 4 over x minus 4. Just following the guidelines. All right, now let's put some functions in there. So, oh, I guess this was g. What's with my f's? Switch it up, guys. Make it g's. Um, so we need g of x. That's an x squared minus a 2x plus a 1. Take away, I'm going to set up a parenthesis because of the takeaway, g of 4. 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus a 1. All over x minus 4. Now, if you want to know where things came from, if it helps you, um, g of 4 creates this, doesn't it? Those are tied together. So if you want to highlight them, you can track it through the process here. The limit as x goes to 4, well, there's not much we can do with x squared minus 2x plus 1. Just write it down. We can do the math on our other things. So we'd have 16 minus 8 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Awesome. Now, I'm going to go a little horizontal here. The limit as x goes to 4. Let's put our two number parts together. So we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 8 over an x minus 4. Factorable? Yes, and I'm going to just save myself some space. So I'm going to go x minus 4 and an x plus 2. And this is beautiful. We need this to happen because 4 going in there would create a zero denominator. Now, let's evaluate x when it is 4, and we get 6. The slope is 6. Woohoo! So g prime of 4 equals 6. That's our IROC. Instantaneous rate of change. When x is 4, it has a slope of 6. Now it says take it into a tangent line. And I'm going to take it into a tangent line. Why? Oh, let's write tangent. Tangent line. It's linear. It has the word line in it. That's points. This is point slope form. Okay. So we're going to have y minus f of, well, our c value was 4, equals f prime of 4, x minus 4. I'm just filling in c's. Now, what was f of 4? Ooh, they didn't give it to us. we got to do a little calculating. Okay, off to the side. Let's find f of 4. Going into the original function, why do I keep saying f? It's actually g's. All those places where I have f should be g's, like right in here. Okay, those two. g of 4. 
back to our original function, x squared minus 2 times 4 plus 1. 16 minus 8 plus 1 gets us a 9. Yes, g of 4 is 9. We had done it over here, hadn't we? All right, so this gives me an original ordered pair of 4, 9. When x is 4, y is 9. Now let's substitute it in. g of 4 is 9 equals g prime. g prime is 6. And then I get my x minus 4. I'll put it 4 in black since that's that ordered pair. There's the equation of the tangent line. Wonderful. All right, tangent lines. We've talked about them a little bit. Let's get at what's really happening when we talk about this instantaneous rate of change. So with your ruler, I want you to draw in. Um, let me see if I can find the pen I want. I want shape recognition. Okay, so when I draw in, it was supposed to snap, but it didn't. Um, this. And that is a secant line. If I allow this point to get closer, because we had x equals c here, let's put just c, and this is our x value. The, here we had c, and over here we had x. Now what we want to do is we want x to become closer to c, right? When we do that limit, as x moves closer to c, notice how it's getting shorter here. And now I've got c and x really close together that there's not much difference between them. And if I keep putting my secant line through here, you will notice that it starts taking on the slope of the tangent line. So if I were to try and draw that tangent line at c, it would be mimicked in case number three by these two points that are slid really close together. As the point x f of x begins to move closer and closer to c, f of c, the slope begins to approximate the slope of the tangent line. That's what's happening in that limit process that we called IROC. Where's our IROC? Right here. We let x move closer to c, just like in this diagram. There's a progression, right? As we move to the right, x is becoming closer and closer to c. So example, or example three is just a question. If f is a function for which the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function equals 0, then which of the following statements must be true? There's a vertical um, asymptote of the graph at negative 2. Well, no, that's not what we've seen, right? What we know is that this represents f prime of c or f prime of negative 2. Um, the derivative exists. Ooh, it does turn out to be 0, which is a number. The function is continuous. I'm not going to know that off that limit. f is not defined. I'm not going to know that. The answer is C, because we recognize this as this is the derivative process or calculation. And we came up with a number, so then, therefore, it exists. All right, I think we've done enough in this video is long enough. I'm not going to do this last problem. It's just somewhat a repeat of what we just went through, but it does compare average rate of change to instantaneous rate of change. You know what, I will do this much. I'm just going to do the setup. So for um, average rate of change, remember this is slope, which is average rate of change. So we'll go m equals, and we'd want to do f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Change of y over change of x. So in this case, I'm going to look at f of 5 minus f of negative 2 over um, 5 minus negative 2. And then you could do the work on that, right, by plugging it in. Oh my gosh, we're so close to done with it anyway. All right, so if I put 5 in, I'd have 
25 minus 20, it's a minus there, and then take away, now put negative 2 in, it's going to give me a 4 plus negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, but negative, negative, so 8, all over 7, so then I end up with what, 5 minus 12 over 7, looks like we come out with negative 1. Instantaneous rate of change, I would want to use this. This is my C that we're after. So I would do F prime of C, the der derivative at 3 is equal to the limit as X approaches 3 of F of X minus F of C, which is 3, over X minus 3, right? And then we would want to substitute F of X in here, limit, as x goes to 3, f of x, boop, 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 I lost it. Oh, there it is. It's too far up for me. Um, x squared minus 4x, take away f of 3. Plugging in 3 would get me a 9 minus 12 over an x minus 3. And then just keep working that through, and um, I got that the slope of the tangent line was two. Beautiful. So here's the worksheet that you're gonna work on. It has 18 problems. Um, you probably will want a ruler because I think with three, um, find the average rate of change. I guess not in that one, but maybe it's on the back ones. I was thinking there was some that you might, yeah, use the graph to approximate those. And you're going to use that method of trying to, so G prime of four, go find four and then you know maybe the tangent line goes through if you can get through a oh there's a dot if you can get through some dots so i could calculate based on this and this then i could get my slope approximation for my a rock all right have a good day